Chapter 1 One thing Xander Landry knew for sure was that moments of peace, when everyone around him was safe and nothing crazy was going on, were few and far between which meant that he'd learned long ago to enjoy them fully whenever they occurred, which, very specifically, meant going fishing as often as possible. He gave a longing glance to the fishing rod that was propped against the wall just behind where he sat. Just a few more minutes, little girl, just a few more minutes, and then it's you and me and the water and the quiet. He was seated in his grandmother's bar with the rest of his family and several friends, just waiting for a lull in the action and conversation to sneak out the back door. Of course, the definition of lull was applied loosely around the Landrys because true quiet, calm moments were a fantasy. For Xander, as part of the Landry family and the town cop, so smack dab in the middle of both family and town drama in all ways, A lull was simply a string of 30 consecutive minutes where no one was likely to die or need to be arrested. That was it. He didn't need to define it any wider than that. If he did, he'd never fish again. He'd just shifted forward in his seat, prepared to stand and head for the back door, when the front door to the bar opened, and everyone got quiet. Well, fuck. No matter how much he wanted quiet, that was never a good sign. Oh, sure, it seemed like it should be, but to stun the entire clan at once took something big. He braced himself and looked toward what was distracting them all. Or rather, who? Yeah, the woman, or at least she and the very wide, very white, very lacy, and very sparkly dress she was wearing, who had just walked in, was big all right. Damn it. This woman no doubt drew attention like this wherever she went. She was gorgeous, for sure, like gorgeous, as in, I'll fight dragons for her gorgeous, which had to be the single most ridiculous thing that had ever crossed Xander's mind. But, yeah, she walked in and looked around with an air that said she expected dragon slayers to be rushing forward, brandishing their swords, and jostling to be the one she chose. Jesus, dude, you need to lay off the fantasy romance. His buddy, Ollie, had let him read an early, unedited version of this third paranormal romance, and clearly the dragon and princesses thing had sunk in. Xander shook his head. That was not good. But in his defense, she was wearing a tiara, an actual tiara. The thing caught the sunlight from the front window, the only window in his grandma's bar and sent sparkles dancing across the floor around her like she was moving under her own spotlight, or disco ball. Though even without all of that, people would have looked. She was carrying a large pet carrier in one hand and dragging a rolling suitcase with the other. And she was wearing a wedding dress, a very big wedding dress. The skirt was full and the train was long. In fact, she had to stop let go of her suitcase, stomp back to the door, push it open, yank the back of her dress across the threshold, and then drag it across the wooden floor of the bar to where her suitcase was parked. The dress also sparkled. Like, really fucking sparkled. It had sequins or rhinestones or something all over it, and, thanks to the dragon and princess romance he'd just finished last night, he thought for a second that she looked like she might have some fairy magic or something going on. Xander shoved a hand through his hair. No, he needed some sleep. And to fucking fish. And to stop reading Ollie's books. Hi, can we help you? His grandmother Ellie, the owner of the bar, asked the woman. She stepped from behind the long, scarred wooden bar where she'd been serving drinks. I assume so, the woman replied. I'm looking for Donovan Foster. Xander's eyes flickered to Donovan. He was standing just to the side with his girlfriend, Naomi. Everyone else's very interested gazes flipped between Donovan and the woman and Naomi. Swear I've never seen her before in my life, Donovan told Naomi quickly. Then he stepped forward. I'm Donovan. The woman thrust the pet carrier at him. Here, I brought this to you. I'm surrendering it. Donovan took the carrier with a frown. 
What is it? The woman lifted a brow. It will be very obvious when you look inside. Right. Donovan set the carrier on the table to his right and bent to look inside. He straightened a moment later and turned to stare at the woman, his shock evident. No way! She lifted one slim shoulder, bare in the strapless dress, and a creamy white that nearly matched the silky fabric. Xander rolled his eyes at himself. He was really noticing her skin tone in such a cliché way? No more romance for a while. But there's that one... No. He's all yours, the woman said to Donovan. I brought him here specifically to you. I know that you are an expert and that you have a sanctuary here. Donovan was an expert in wild animal rescue and rehabilitation, and they did have a sanctuary here for wild and abused and abandoned animals. Xander sighed. He did not want to know what was inside the pet carrier. The woman turned and started for the front door. What is it? Naomi asked Donovan. It's... Donovan clearly decided it was easier to show than tell. He opened the carrier, reached inside, and pulled the animal out, holding it up for everyone to see. I kind of feel like that opening song from The Lion King should be playing right now, one of Xander's cousins said. Donovan was holding up a lion cub, an actual real live lion cub. Because of course he was. Come on, someone groaned. Yeah, Xander felt the same way but it was a minority opinion that having the local petting zoo turned into an animal park and wildlife sanctuary was a little over the top. Of course, he was one of only a few who was actually inconvenienced by things like the increased number of visitors to the park causing increased traffic and commotion in town, all of which generally meant more phone calls and paperwork for Xander. It also meant far fewer fishing trips. Xander slumped down in his seat and pulled his hat down over his eyes. Any minute, someone was going to think that he needed to go after the stranger who had just left the building in a wedding dress after dropping off a lion cub. But for now, they were distracted by the baby animal. Maybe by the time they realized that there was a human acting unusually, she'd be gone and he wouldn't have to worry about looking into what the hell that was all about though he probably should check on it, because later he would wonder what the hell it was all about. Still, she hadn't done anything wrong, and she hadn't asked for help, and while he generally was all about helping people, he also believed in leaving them alone when they didn't need help and weren't hurting anyone. I guess we have a lion now, Donovan said to the room at large. Just like that? Knox, their city manager, who was also often inconvenienced by things having to do with the animal park, asked. He turned to Fiona Grady. People besides you are going to be bringing stuff here? Fiona owned and operated an animal park in Florida. She was also an animal advocate and rescued animals from abuse and neglect situations on a regular basis. She was the reason that the boys of the bayou gone wild had gone from a petting zoo with goats and alpacas and a few otters to a park that had lemurs, red pandas, and even a sloth. Fiona shrugged. She surrendered him to Donovan. He is a wildlife expert and we are an animal sanctuary, so she can do that. Without knowing where she got it, what if she stole it? Yeah, that thought had crossed Xander's mind as well, which meant he had a real reason to go after her. Damn it. Why would she be bringing him to Donovan if she stole him? Fiona asked. Why would she just have it in the first place? Knox shot back. Well, those are really good questions to ask her, Fiona said. Knox and Fiona both turned to look at Xander. He didn't say anything. Those were really good questions. Did anyone else notice she was in a wedding dress? Another cousin asked. And pulling a suitcase, one of Xander's sisters-in-law added. Might be a good idea to just ask if she's okay, too. You know, if there's any particular reason she's here in that dress without, you know, a groom? Another cousin agreed. 
Xander closed his eyes and tried not to groan out loud. God, he had a lot of relatives. And they tended to all hang out together in one big, loud, all-talking-at-once, opinionated group. It was no wonder he had so many headaches. Maybe he's outside waiting, Xander's brother offered. Why is she pulling her suitcase around then? Yet another cousin, who happened to be Xander's boss, asked. He could at least hold her bag. Maybe he's an asshole, Xander thought to himself. And he's sending her into a strange bar alone with that tiara on her head? Xander's other sister-in-law asked. Damn, there were a lot of people here right now. No way, either he is a huge asshole or he's not out there, someone said. It didn't really matter who. Somebody really should probably go find out, another voice agreed. Now they all looked at Xander. He really should have snuck out of here 20 minutes ago. He sighed. What? This kind of seems like something maybe you should follow up on, doesn't it? Fiona asked him. Wearing a tiara and a wedding dress isn't illegal, Xander told her, which was true. He probably didn't need to worry about the woman at all. If she could afford a tiara like that, which he doubted was fake, she was going to be fine. Xander, about twelve people said at once. He sighed again, more heavily this time. Not that his sighing ever got to anyone around here. I just wanted to go fishing today. Alexander Raymond Landry, his grandmother said, taking a step toward the table. Yeah, now he had to get up and go after her. Even at age 26 and in uniform, he didn't mess with Ellie when she used that tone. Okay, okay, jeez. Xander shoved to his feet and straightened his hat. Hell, he'd been going after the woman anyway. Not that he was going to admit that to them. They all needed to mind their own business. He almost laughed out loud at that concept. Let's not all go getting all worked up, he said dryly as he stepped around the end of the table. We wouldn't want that to happen. Worked up was pretty much the constant state of the Landry family. He started for the front door after the woman, muttering about how any one of them could have gone after her and how being an only child born to only children parents was probably heaven and how they were all huge pains in his ass. No one moved to stop him and no one asked him what he was muttering. They knew better. Xander stomped to the door and jerked it open, stepping out into the late afternoon. He didn't know how the woman had gotten down here, but surely she'd returned the same way, whether she'd driven herself or had hired a car. But nope, of course not. He was definitely not going fishing today. She was sitting by the road on her suitcase with her fancy schmancy wedding dress, dragging in the Louisiana dirt that covered his grandmother's parking lot. Her head was bowed, and her shoulders were slumped. She looked sad and alone and dejected. Well, fuck. He looked up and down the road as he started toward her. No sign of a stalled car. Why couldn't she have had car trouble? No unconscious body either. Why couldn't her groom have had too much to drink at the reception and she'd pulled in here for help when he'd passed out in the car on their way to their honeymoon suite? No. It wouldn't be anything easy like that, would it? But he knew exactly what to do with a woman who'd been left at the altar. Take her back inside Ellie's. There was plenty of booze just inside, and other women. He could easily pawn her off on any of the girls, who would tell her all about what a dumbass the guy was, and how she deserved better, and how she'd come to the right place to drown her sorrows. She'd be shit-faced and laughing in no time. Then he'd take her over to the B&B, have Heather put her to bed and feed her in the morning, and then he'd drive her wherever she wanted to go when she felt better. Feeling a little more optimistic, he approached her. He had a lot of women in his life, but they weren't the cry-over-being-dumped types. They were more the cut-off-his-balls-and-feed-them-to-the-gators types. Now that he was in law enforcement, he couldn't cover for them like he would have at one point. 
but they all also knew better than to tell him flat out about anything like that. And he knew what questions to not ask. Ma'am? Her head came up as he approached, and Xander realized that she hadn't been crying at all. Her head had been down, strands of hair falling over the side of her face because she had been hunched over her phone. She seemed confused when she looked up at him. Yes? When her eyes met his, Xander had to take a second. God damn romance novels. That was his first thought. Well, after cataloging that her eyes were a stunning aquamarine blue, her hair was at least three different shades of gold all streaked together in thick waves, and her skin was smooth and creamy. All of those were descriptors that came straight from the pages of the books he read with his friends in their romance book club. No way would he have noticed all of that before he'd started reading those damned books. A fucking hot blonde would have done it. But she was gorgeous. Not just from across a dim room with a tiara halo on top of her head, but right up close along a dirt road, too. And that was all the most cliched shit he'd ever heard. Thought. Whatever. Still, he had to pry his damned tongue from the roof of his mouth. Because of all the stupid romance novels he read, and movies he watched, and country love songs he listened to, and because he was a Landry. He sighed. Mostly because he was a Landry. He might not have actually thought the words aquamarine blue without the books, but he would have had the wow, she's something special thought trip through his head because of his DNA. The Landry family had as much romance in their blood as red blood cells. They were genetically programmed and then nurtured from the crib to believe in love and fate and soulmates and romance. Some of them just went with it. Some of them fought it. But none of them were immune. He cleared his throat and ignored the voice in his head that whispered, She's extraordinary. See? Even the voice in his head was romantically dramatic. Good God, she wasn't extraordinary. She was new. She was a beautiful blonde. He loved blondes. And he'd hooked up with all the eligible ones in Autre. That's all this was. She was new and hot. He cleared his throat again and put his cop voice on. I was just wondering if I could be of some assistance. Unless you have some unused hotel points, probably not. He blinked at her. Hotel points? She wanted him to take her to a hotel? Just like that? She nodded. What I need right now is a hotel, and he's already cut off my credit cards. She's in a fucking wedding dress, asshole, Xander reminded himself. If that didn't make a woman off limits, he didn't know what did. Not to mention the gigantic diamond ring on the fourth finger of her left hand that glinted in the sunlight as she lifted it to tuck a strand of that thick, silky, golden hair behind her ear. Thick, silky, golden hair? You need to get a murder mystery in your head ASAP. That ring cost more than his truck, both of his trucks, put together. Focus, you're a cop, and she's, what was she? Gorgeous and in need of a hotel room. Okay, that he could do. What's your name? Caroline. Caroline, I'm Officer Landry, so you need a place to stay? She sighed and dropped her phone to her lap. Well, I guess I need a pawn shop first. She frowned. How did he cut those cards off already? That was his first thought after everything went down? Your new husband? Her frown deepened. I don't have a husband. Awesome. What? No, that's not awesome. That is not even relevant to anything. It was simply an answer to one question, or maybe part of one question. The wedding she was dressed for hadn't happened. So, your fiancé? My father. 
I was expecting to be cut off eventually, but I didn't think it would be number one on his to-do list. She chewed the inside of her cheek, looking past Xander, clearly lost in thought. So you don't have any money? I had to give the rest of my cash to my driver for bringing me down here. You had a driver bring you down here, but he left? Well, I guess technically he's Brantley's driver. Your father? My fiancé. Ex-fiancé, Brantley Anderson. Right. There were a lot of people in this scenario. So, the driver brought you down here, but didn't wait for you? No, the bastard. And I'm sure he's going to tell them all where I am, too. And you don't want them to know where you are? No, I need a break. Okay. He was not going to delve into this any further. She was not crying. She was not hurt in any way. She had left her wedding seemingly on purpose and not under the influence, and now she was more or less stranded here in Autre. That meant his job was fairly straightforward. Is there anyone I can call for you to come help you? She shook her head. No. Then how can I help? Is there anywhere around here that would take me on my word that I would pay them back at a later date? She wiggled her left hand with the enormous diamond ring on it. I have the ability to get some money. I just don't have it on me at the moment. Hence the pawn shop reference. So she was planning to sell the ring. He knew lots of jilted women did that, and honestly, he couldn't blame them. Maybe she'd found out her fiancé was cheating right before walking down the aisle. Maybe she'd been faced with a church full of people and realized that she simply couldn't promise to love this man for the rest of her life. It wasn't really Xander's place to judge why she'd left without even changing her clothes. She had, and that was her business. What she did with the ring on her left hand was also her business. But he felt something he almost never felt. Curious. They did have a motel in town a few blocks away, and there was a chance they'd let her stay if he acted as a reference. But there was another place that was a sure thing. My cousin's aunt actually owns the bed and breakfast here in town. I'll take you over there. She looked puzzled. Your cousin's aunt? She isn't your aunt? She's their aunt on their mother's side. We're cousins on their dad's side. She went over that in her mind, then shook her head. It's really like that in small towns, huh? Related to everyone, somehow? It is here. And she'll let me stay just because you ask her to? Yep. I kind of thought it was just TV movie stuff. Caroline seemed charmed by the information. Xander shrugged and pushed away how charming he found her being charmed by his town and family connections. Well, it works that way around here. You'd really vouch for me. Worst case scenario, you skip out without paying your bill, and Heather makes me scrub a few toilets in exchange. I've done worse. At that, she gave him a bright smile, and Xander felt like she'd punched him in the gut. Yeah, he needed to avoid having this woman smile at him. She wasn't technically taken, but she'd literally walked out of her wedding mere hours ago. She came with baggage. Literally, and he really tried to avoid baggage. He wasn't looking for anything serious. At all. No way. No thank you. And wearing a wedding dress and an engagement ring big enough to knock out a guy's front tooth if she punched him just right was an obvious sign that the woman was ready for something serious. With someone. Did he believe in love? Absolutely. It was all around him. Everyone in his family had, or would, fall in love. A couple of them, more than once. Did he believe in love at first sight? Again, yes. Not only had he read about it over and over again, and enjoyed the hell out of it for reasons he couldn't explain and had given up pondering a long time ago, but he'd seen it in real life around him and friends and family as well. Did he think that he and this woman might actually have some kind of connection that was real? Sure, maybe. But he didn't care. 
believing in something and wanting it for himself were two different things. Here, let me help you with your bag. He took a step forward as she stood and he was about to grasp the handle on her suitcase when he heard the sound of a car approaching. This road had definitely not always been a major road in town. It ran past several Landry family businesses, mechanic, construction, Ellie's Bar, and it brought tourists to the boys of the Bayou Swamp Boat and Fishing Tours office and docks. In the past year, though, it had become much more heavily traveled. Not only had the Swamp Boat Company's business grown, but now the family's petting zoo and animal park brought in lots of visitors. So Xander didn't think much of the sound of the car, until he looked up, and a black stretch limo screeched to a halt right in front of them. The next thing he knew, a man in a tuxedo jumped out of the back seat and stalked toward the woman. Oh, good. The fiancé was here. Xander hated the guy on sight, which was not okay. He was feeling jealous and possessive. No, just no. It would actually be fantastic if his soulmate was married to someone else. Very off limits way out of Xander's way and reach. Good for the guy coming to win her back. You need to immediately download a book about investing and then do a reread of To Kill a Mockingbird. Get off the romance, man! Damn it, Caroline! What the fuck? Get your ass in the car! We're going back to New Orleans! Okay, that was not all right. Xander frowned and took a big step forward. Instead of screaming or running, however, the woman faced the man with her hands planted on her hips. Chris, what the hell are you doing here? How did you even find me? Don't worry about that. Just get in the car. Everyone is pissed, but they said if you come back now, we can still do it. They're all just waiting. Caroline crossed her arms. I'm not going back. You can tell them all to go to hell. You are going back. The man wrapped an arm around Caroline's waist and lifted her off the ground, starting back toward the car. She immediately started kicking and hitting and pummeling him with both fists. You asshole, put me down! Yeah, okay, now Xander was getting involved. Hey! The man turned and looked at him. Put her down. Stay out of this. This is just between us. It stopped being between just the two of you when she said no and you didn't listen. Look, ma'am, I understand if she batted her eyes and made you some promises, but she's got an appointment in New Orleans. Xander drew to his full height and shifted so that guy could see his badge clipped on the front of his belt. This isn't about batting eyelashes. The guy sighed and put Caroline down. You got the cops involved? Caroline shoved him back. I didn't get anybody involved. He came out to see if I was all right. Well, tell him you're fine and get your ass in the car. No, because I'm not fine. I'm not getting in the car, and I'm not getting married today. Caroline? Xander took another big step that put him right beside Caroline. I believe she said no. So, this is going to be a problem? Chris asked Xander. It doesn't have to be. If you get in the car and leave, without her. Chris looked from Xander to Caroline, then back. Fine. He looked at Caroline. But you know this isn't over. He straightened his jacket, muttered a curse, then stomped to the limo, got in the back, and a moment later the car drove away. Xander turned to look at the woman with a brow up. Anything else you'd like to tell me? She met his eyes directly. She studied him, seemingly thinking over his question. Finally, she nodded. Yeah, I think so. Okay, what's going on? It might take a bit. Want to buy me a drink? She glanced back toward Ellie's. Did he want to take the gorgeous woman in a wedding dress with another man's ring on her finger who had almost been kidnapped right in front of him back inside his grandmother's bar where most of his family and a lot of the town was gathered? He most certainly did not. No, he said simply. 
Caroline looked surprised. Can we... She looked around. At least go somewhere else? That seemed like a good idea. She was very conspicuous here, and his family could, at any moment, come out and start asking questions. Not to mention that the would-be kidnapper now knew where she was. Is there a chance your fiancé is going to come back? Of course there was. A man didn't just let this woman go. She bit her bottom lip and looked up the road. Then she nodded. Yeah, there's a chance. Or that he'll tell someone else where I am. She looked at Xander again. But that was my brother, not my fiancé. Oh, that was interesting. No, it fucking isn't. Knock it off. So will your fiancé be coming after you? Ex fiance. Right, she mentioned that. Okay, will he come after you? She didn't answer right away, which Xander also found interesting. Though he shouldn't, he did not want to be interested in this woman at all. He didn't want anyone getting kidnapped while they were in Autre, though, either. Okay, he didn't really want anyone getting kidnapped, period, but especially while they were in Autre. There's a chance, Caroline finally admitted. Or my dad might come. Or my ex fiance's dad might come. And you don't want to go back with any of them, is that right? Yes. Well, fuck. He had to at least be sure she didn't get taken anywhere by anyone against her will. And he would feel that way about anyone. It had nothing to do with the crazy stirring in his gut that seemed new, different, more intense. She studied him for a long moment. So, you're willing to help me, Officer Landry? Her question, and her voice, and her eyes, and her everything, if he was being honest with himself, which he decided to not be, sent a shot of something through Xander's chest. It was the familiar streak of adrenaline he often felt with his work. It primed his gut to act on instinct when necessary. It made him ready to take on people intent on doing bad things and face potential danger, and it focused his mind. But he also recognized the sliver of trepidation. It wasn't fear or reluctance. It was awareness, like knowing he was about to open a big old can of worms. But he nodded. Helping people with problems is kind of my job. Then I would love to tell you what's going on. He wanted that. And it wasn't the cop in him thinking that. Fuck! Damn it! Hell! Son of a bitch! Okay. Let's go someplace your brother doesn't know about. Like your place? Yes. He wanted her at his place. That was the safest. He could definitely keep her safe there. His property was at the end of a dead-end road, so the only traffic was trucks he knew. His neighbors were his brothers and cousins. His backyard butted up to the bayou. But fuck no! He wasn't taking this woman anywhere near his house, where his bedroom was. She was dangerous. He couldn't sort through all the reasons why at the moment, not while looking into her eyes and wondering how soft her skin was and how silky her hair was. But he had enough self-preservation instinct to keep her away from his house. I'm thinking the B&B. He grabbed her suitcase and started for his truck. But he might think to look there, she protested. She gathered up her enormous skirts and followed him, though. I'll tell Heather not to tell anyone anything about you, Xander told her, storing her bag behind the front seat and then turning to face her. Fuck. Again with the eyes and hair and lips. Okay, he hadn't included the lips in the earlier inventory, but they were great, too. So he liked female lips. Big deal. These were not that exceptional. What the hell was wrong with him? She's probably your damn soulmate or some shit, and the second you touch her hand, you're going to feel sparks. I'm not going to feel sparks. That's a stupid cliche. But I have to get some war biographies, or maybe something about Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Something about women who are amazing, but not sexy. It doesn't have to be about sexy all the time. 
get away from those romance novels. The thing was, smart, bold women like RBG were sexy in their own way, and if Xander had been Ruth's age and run into her at a bar when she was single, he absolutely would have hit on her. Are you okay? Caroline asked, stepping forward with a slight frown. He jerked out of his stupid thoughts. Yeah, I'm fine. You're the one with the problem. Well, that had sounded rude as fuck. Her eyes widened, but then she nodded. Yeah, I am. We should definitely work on my problem. It's going to keep getting bigger if we don't. Xander sighed. He didn't even know what that meant, but of course it was. 